just to recap on what you supposed to have done so far with regards to the previous lab, um, you were going through the data, which somehow has, uh, let's say, readily open data points. They're available. Uh, we went over things like the number of overtakes, um, the did not complete, and the weather. Um, but in practice, uh, there's actually some hidden data that would add more value in a predictive situation for purposes of machine learning. Um, so it's up to us to uncover those patterns to be able to make a prediction that is of value, that would contribute uh, at the end of the day. Um, so what we're going to do for this lab, and I'm going to be demoing this lab since it's more of an advanced data exploration. Uh, so just to have you in sync, um, we're going to go over some deeper, let's say, data exploration to come up with some hidden insights, hidden patterns from the data. Um, so you created a number of projects from the previous lab, and the one that we're going to be coming back to is the race analysis. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open the race analysis. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update this filter right here, and I'm actually going to remove one of the options. So I'll just click on this, and I'm going to take away the 2020 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And we're just going to focus on the Brazilian Grand Prix. Um, so once that filter takes effect, um, we're going to focus on one actually of the drivers here. So we're going to be focusing on Vettel. So once I've selected the name um, for, from the legend, you can see it highlights that line chart there. And we see that something happened at the very beginning of the race that kind of pushed Vettel to, to, be, to go back into the 22nd position. But all throughout the race itself, uh, we noticed that he's done quite a comeback and ended up landing in sixth position, uh, which was actually enough to, to get him to, to the championship for that, uh, for that year, right? Um, so what does that mean? So generally, when there's a comeback, obviously that's of interest to the viewers, right? But it's even more interesting when we notice that uh, the driver has come up a number of consecutive positions throughout that race. So that's something to make a note of, right? That when there's a comeback, when there's an advance in positions, that can po most probably positively impact the score that a viewer would give to that race. So that's sort of one of the first insights that we've reached that was initially hidden from the main data, right? Um, so next thing that we want to look at is maybe take into consideration pit stops and how they would play in the progression of the race itself. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually add, first we're going to change the race. We're going to look at a more recent race here. Um, so we're going to change this to the Austrian Grand Prix. So let me just type that in the, in the search bar. There we go. And then once we've made that update, we're actually going to add in the pit stop into the shape section. And we're going to see two shapes coming up where we have the square signifying that the driver has made a pit stop. And then the circle represents the driver basically uh, being in line uh, in track. And we're gonna focus on one of the racers. So we're actually gonna focus on Norris right here, highlighting in the legend. And we see the two racers that sort of overlap with Norris are the one in green right here, which is Bottas, the one in orange, which is Hamilton, right? So this is where they kind of intersect at some point during the race. So if we focus at around lap 30, we see that there was an overtake by Bottas uh, to Norris, but we also noticed that Norris actually made a pit stop at that point. Um, so obviously something interesting when an overtake happens, but it's important to note that there was a pit stop here where when we compare it to, for example, in lap 20 right here, there was an overtake by Hamilton to Norris and there was no pit stop, but nothing happened in that part. Um, so this kind of brings us to the notion that there are two types of overtakes within a race. There is one that happens as a result of a driver doing a pit stop, and then there's another one that happens purely on the racetrack. Um, so it might be of value to note that there are two types, and in general, it is more interesting when there's an overtake on the racetrack itself, 
rather than when there's a pit stop there. So that's our, let's say, second um, hidden insight that we've managed to uncover from that video. Um, so next thing that we want to look at is how do the drivers do in comparison to each other? So obviously we've been we've been seeing this from a position standpoint, uh, but that doesn't really explain from a time perspective how far away they are from each other in terms of seconds. That's not visually available at this point. So what we want to do is we want to add a calculation uh, to kind of factor in that time component in a visual way, right? Uh, so first we're going to update that filter again, and we're going to go back to the Brazilian Grand Prix. So let me just go back to the selection. There we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the calculation, right? Um, so we're going on the left pane right here where we have the data. We right click calculations and click on add calculation. And we're gonna be dragging and dropping the median millisecond cumulative onto the section for the calculation, add a minus sign and then drag in the millisecond cumulative. And we're gonna be calling this the delta right. Um, so we're gonna be introducing the notion of a, a delta ghost car, right? And the ghost car here is meant to represent the average time for the entire pack, the average time that it takes for the entire pack. So that's supposed to be sort of like our median line right there. So we're gonna be calling this the Delta Ghost Car. So let me just add that to the name, Delta to Ghost Car. And we're gonna save this. Right, and we're gonna be creating a new visual. So let me just take this off so that it's more clear visually. And we're gonna be taking in the lap, the driver reference, and then the delta to ghost car. So missed that. There we go. Right click, and we're gonna be picking a visualization, which is a line chart. So our y axis is gonna be that delta to the ghost car. Um, our x axis is the lap, and then the color reference is the driver, right? So um, the horizontal axis here, where y is equal to zero, that's our ghost car right there. All of the lines that are above are actually moving uh, at a faster pace than that uh, ghost car. And then anything that's below is actually slower. And if we focus a bit in this area right here, at laps, let's say 25, between 25 and 30, there's an event that happened that brought all those cars closer together. And most likely what happened is that the safety car was deployed. And this is quite interesting because when a safety car is introduced, it kind of resets the status of um, the race because all the cars have to come together at a very close um, distance. And then it's sort of like, it starts off all over again with the race continuing after the safety car is deployed, right? So, so that's sort of the third hidden insight that we've managed to uncover. Um, so just as a quick recap of what we've managed to identify from this is that we are aware that there are some hidden gems, so to speak, in the data that we can definitely make use of when we add to the data set to be able to make the most value of our machine learning model. And we've managed to come up with three main insights from this practice. First is the fact that um, overtakes, in, and especially when there's a huge comeback, can positively impact the score that a viewer would give to a race. And then second is the fact that when you have an overtake, there are sort of two types of overtakes. There's a real overtake that happens on the track itself. And there's sort of a semi overtake that happens when there's a pit stop. So what might be of value to be able to identify those two types on the level of the data. And then third is the introduction of a safety car kind of resets the race. So with that, there, there is possibly an impact on the score um, for the viewer to the race. Uh, so I hope that kind of brings everything uh, together.